Hey, this is Austin Eckler, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah! Welcome in! Thursday, June eighteenth. <laughs> I know. I don't know what the sounds were there. <laughs> twenty twenty. Welcome into the show. Mike Wright is here. That is correct. Fantasy hitman. A fantasy hat man these days. My good. <laughs> <laughs> Get a haircut. We were just talking about that. You have. Uh, oh, it's there's a there's a troubled situation under there's this so thing. So much. Yeah. yeah, I can see it's growing out over your ears. It's going to get in the way of your earbuds soon. It's, it's, it's a problem. It is a problem. Well, oh, we went to the close-up. <laughs> Thank you. We you apologize. Take, for take playing. the hat off. Show it off, Mike. Oh, hey, oh, that's now put looking. the Put the hat on. Put it on. Oh, nope. wow. It's too late. Um, I will trade you all of your hair <laughs> for n- n- very little of mine. <laughs> Which would you prefer, Mike? Oh, I'll take mine. Ah. Thank you. Yeah, how do, it doesn't feel great sitting on the sidelines when people complain about the fact they need it's, a haircut. Oh, I've got too much hair. It's just so thick. My hair's so <laughs> thick, and it's just out of control. It grows so fast everywhere. <laughs> do you know the cost I have to pay on shampoo? Uh, Jason Moore is here, if you here. didn't notice. Yeah. <laughs> My hair grows slow enough where I'm, I'm still okay. To be clear, I said Jason Moore is here, not Jason Moore is hair. No, no. yes, of course. Uh, great show for you today. Early breakouts and busts. Some news to talk about. We'll get into the mailbag. You can find us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. Giving away a signed Devontae Adams jersey right now at footclangiveaway.com. And definitely check out the website, thefantasyfootballers.com, for new and exciting articles each week. Mm-hmm. Aaron Larson just threw one up there. Make the most of your mock drafts, which we did on Tuesday. And uh, it turned out pretty nice. Yep. Thank you, David Montgomery, for falling <laughs> yeah. into the fifth fifth pick or whatever it was. You guys want to do some buy-sell? Yep. Buy or Sell, presented by Pristine Auction. It's weird that I just don't even want to talk about this guy anymore. That is weird. Buy or Sell, Baker Mayfield... Baker Mayfield, 27 or more touchdowns in 2020. In his rookie season, that's the number he hit, 27. So rookie record? Yes. So in in, in 13 starts. Correct. And then in 16 starts in 2019, he put up a sweet 22. Mm. So are you buying or selling 27 or more? I'm selling... (laughs) the man a chance i'm buying yeah there we go i you know i i looked obviously we stat everybody out for the ultimate draft kit let's see if i'm buying or selling based on that i have i have baker mayfield throwing 30 touchdowns this year all right and that doesn't necessarily mean that he's some fantasy superstar Uh, you know yeah he might throw 30 interceptions exactly i've got him with 15 interceptions so he's down at my uh, quarterback 16 but he does have a great cast to throw the ball to maybe you could you could make an argument it's the best in the league between Odell Beckham Jarvis Landry Austin Hooper Kareem Hunt uh I still believe in David Njoku and and a lot of those is that like his official legal name now you can't just call him David Njoku you have to refer to him as I still, I still believe in yes David I still Njoku. believe in David Njoku is on the Cleveland Browns um but I I, I think that you know that a lot of the problem last year was Freddie Kitchens. I don't know that Stefanski is the solution, but I do know for sure that there are great receiving options. So if Baker, I mean, this is just a Did matter Did we just of, play a clip from last year? I, I mean, all that, that was true last year. It was true. He, they, had, he had great receiving. Sure, didn't he didn't have, have Austin Hooper. Hunt. He didn't have Kareem Hunt for half the year, and he didn't have Austin Hooper. So I think those are two pretty, pretty big differences. It was year one with Odell Beckham, who was also injured. So, you know, I... I 
he had 22, 27 the year prior. This is not out of the realm of possibility. Yeah, 27 is not impossible by any stretch. I'll sell it. I think this team's identity will be the running game. I saw some people talking about Cam Newton because you know, Cam Newton was working out with Odell. Talked about him being a backup option in Cleveland if the upcoming season were to go the way last year's went for Baker. Having some competition, having somebody to step in would have been important. I mean, this was, it was arguably the worst starter of, of the NF, in the NFL last year. He was bad. Yeah, he, he was very, very bad. And the thing you didn't mention, Jay, is it's, it's the offensive line. Massive, massive upgrades for the Cleveland Browns offensive line compared to last year. And that's, that's that should make what a big difference. I, that's what the difference to me. I have, Right now, I have Baker projected for 26. So, I you know, I'm, I'm selling based on my projection, but that's – very, that's very a soft close. sell. Yeah, it's. I I certainly see thirty in the realm of possibilities. Eddie, what do you have him statted out for? Twelve. Twenty. <laughs> Twenty. What? You're, he's getting worse. That is correct, Mike. <laughs> Based on mathematics, you are accurate. Yes, he's getting worse. <laughs> that's all right. Uh, actually, I I don't have him. Uh, collapsing this team. Like I said, the identity, the Stefanski offense, the fact that Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt can carry the load and they can have success with that. Um, yeah, tw I mean, 20 is low. 20 is very low. I, last year, so Kirk Cousins, when things had completely changed for Minnesota, and I'm not, you know, Kirk Cousins is a better quarterback than Baker at this point, but in 15 games of a regular season, Kirk Cousins was at 26. So that even with the the identity being completely on the running game, he's, I agree. he's still hit twenty six. It's about efficiency. It is about efficiency, and, but that also wasn't. It wasn't just like some abnormal low touchdown total last year. It was a low yardage total. It was it was not having success. He played sixteen games. He only threw for thirty eight hundred yards. I, yeah. I think it's fair to look back at last year and say that Baker Mayfield was bad at at yes. quarterback he he was missing guys that were wide open I mean when you watch if you go back and look at all the targets to Odell Beckham you would talk about two people on a different page of the playbook it, they, they were so out of sync so many uncatchable targets he was just flat out bad and so this is why it's a matter of what do you believe about Baker is he just not actually good enough to be an NFL uh franchise quarterback we're with, about to find out yeah and then this is going to be the make or break I still believe uh, in David and Joku and Baker Mayfield. <laughs> 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 All right, that was Buy Yourself from Pristine Auction. PristineAuction.com. Use the code BALLERS. Get a $10 credit on some sweet sports memorabilia. News and notes from around the league. Well, we have some... Is this, this is unfortunate Eagles news. Yes. This oh, is, man become par for the course Eagles news in some ways. First, Alshon Jeffrey <laughs> without a timetable for return. If mm. you have to add, I still believe in front of David and Joku, you have to add without a timetable for return after uh, Alshon Jeffrey into the, he, he had a Liz Frank injury to in 2019, no timetable to return. Yeah. Alshon Jeffrey, once again, looking as, unreliable as ever yeah, yeah if you read the injury uh blurbs in the ultimate draft kit that's really telling on alshon jeffrey i mean it that was you know done a month ago where it, it looked like just based on the injury what it was when it happened that it would be a very very real possibility he starts the season on the pop and now i think that's the expectation of a lot of eagles beat writers is that he's gonna miss six games and that is bad, bad news for the Eagles, bad for, obviously, Alshon and his value. Good news for Jalen Rager trying to get a sure. chance to come in as a rookie with high target volume. Um, but, yeah, that's not good. And it's not the only bad piece of news from no. the Eagles game. I think that's Go secondary. On. Go on. Right. I think the bigger news is that uh, star yep. right guard uh, Brandon Brooks has suffered a torn left Achilles <laughs> tendon. He will miss the entire 2020 season. See, Brooks told me to hit the loser horn, but that felt really demeaning on a person's actual injury. Yeah, that was more about the... That, he, to he, me, was, that was a horn of, of sadness. Thank is, you. That's is how I interpreted it. We were with... That's we where were I was with, coming yes. from. Yes. Yeah, but, that, but this does not summarize the... I mean, that just doesn't summarize the <sighs> gravity. It, hey, well, Mike, hey, hey, did you hear? Mike broke his leg. 
All right, I you know see where I, mean? I see where you know you're coming from. Okay. I see where you're coming from. But, but this yeah. is big news. Yeah, well, yeah, like this sucks. This sucks <laughs> really bad. For the, not only for the Philadelphia Eagles, but just as fans of football, because this the Brandon Brooks injury to me is more impactful than the Alshon Jeffrey injury. One, because Jeffrey should be back eventually, but you need the offensive line for everything for for Wentz for all for when Alshon Jeffrey comes back like. This is very unfortunate news. He was, in fact, PFF, Pro Football Focus, number one overall overall guard in 2019. Think, think about Carson Wentz when Lane Johnson well, this was is say, there just, yeah. and is not there. This is like two bits of news that just put the Eagles in the exact same spot they were in last year. Yeah, Offensive line problems, wide receiver problems. Carson Wentz's career, much, much better better projections with Alshon Jeffrey in the lineup from a touch like he's played 23 games without him his 16 game pace touchdown wise without Alshon Jeffrey is 18 with Alshon in that's 33 worse games, than 20 yeah with Alshon it's 34 on a, wow. on a season so and you've seen it down in the red zone Alshon's just yeah. kind of like a go-to guy as annoying as he is for fantasy owners he's, he's great on the field he's really helpful for Carson yeah. Wentz and here the Eagles are in the same boat as they were last year. And season. he, you know, dynasty wise, he should be able to come back fine. He's actually had this injury already on his other leg. Wait, and he came back. You're talking about Brandon Brooks? Yes. Oh, um, it's like Alshon dynasty. No, is, dynasty. No. I would not. Just want talking about him on the, the Eagles and Carson Wentz and and uh, with okay. Brandon Brooks's injury, he'll be able to come back, but it's not going to be in 2020. 49ers extended Kyle Shanahan. This is according to they're following the obligatory made it to the Super Bowl rule where you have to do this immediately. Yeah, following. Well, it, and it wasn't just an extension; it was a he had three years left because if you remember, the Forty ers went all in uh, on Kyle Shanahan when they signed him. Yes, but so it's actually a six a new six year contract because the the three years that he's on or that he had left they have now been replaced with a with a pay raise. Kyle Shanahan offenses are great they are they are great everywhere he has gone he has had a great offense won't be the last time we're talking about a kyle shanahan offense on today's show all right you guys want to talk oh one more bit of news uh, sort of saints running back coach joel thomas confirmed alvin Kamara played through knee ankle and back injuries last season i guess confirmed what our eyes showed us what the yeah. production showed us We've talked a lot about the Saints offense, how they went from this, you know, Kamara, I think, at 18 total touchdowns the year before. Last year, the rushing touchdowns dropped off the map for New Orleans. Maybe they didn't have confidence in Alvin Kamara around the goal line. Well, and we knew he had he had the ankle sprain mm -hmm. that, that cost him some games, but knowing that he was also dealing with a knee and a back injury, it's... Does this concern you at all for durability? Do you look at him and say... Not really. Maybe he's... Okay. I mean, it, every running back gets hurt. So this, I, I think we could get this report from every running back coach about their about player. their they're running like, back. They're like, well, actually, he's he was playing through a through a back and a knee injury all year. That's true. I mean, it's true they get beat up. So, any other news you guys want to talk about? Nah. All right, let's go. Breakouts. Almost gotcha. <laughs> so the ultimate draft kit has a number of what we would call consensus breakouts from the three of us. This show is about some individual early breakout and bust picks. So we're sitting here in the middle of June. We have some of our favorites. I'm sure we will not agree on all of these names. That is for sure. <laughs> Especially because, Jason, I know I've scanned this uh, show document here, and I know you've taken some shots at players that... Hey, uh, this, is, this is my opportunity to say what I believe the truth is. That's true. So let's start with our early breakout picks, and we'll go right into that Shanahan offense. I'm going to go with running back Raheem Mostert. Okay. Uh, if you look at the identity of this team... You talk about what Kyle Shanahan does best and has proven he can do in the NFL. It's run the football. The 49ers last year, they had the second most rushing attempts in the National Football League with 498 attempts. That was behind 
Baltimore. Baltimore has an extra running back built into that quarterback, and that's why they led the way. But from a running back perspective, nobody really does it quite like San Francisco. And, you know, you had Matt, Matt Breida in the mix last year. Raheem Mostert, did he break out at the back half of the year? I would say he had breakout games. Still had a couple disappearing acts, and you still have Tevin Coleman to deal with. But Raheem Mostert is in a position here with Matt Breida leaving 123 carries that he had last year. He's in Miami now. He has a great opportunity to have a much larger workload in one of the best rushing offenses in football. So I think he's not being valued that way in fantasy drafts right now. Um, interesting stat about Raheem Mostert last year. Some people like the yards per carry metric. Some people hate the yards per carry metric. Player profiler goes a step further with what they call their true yards per carry, which basically gets rid of those monster runs and looks at a more averaged uh, number. Raheem Mostert was number one in football last year in that average number. Now, he still had 12 breakaway runs that put his yards per carry at 5.6, but when you kind of normalize it, it was still 5.3, best running back in football by that metric. A lot of that has to do with the system. It's taken Raheem Mostert a long time mm. to get to this point, but this was a 95th percentile speed guy, 442. This was a 96th percentile burst score. So Raheem Mostert, we saw it on the field last year. He was their best running back. And I think he's going to have every opportunity to be that guy again this year. Tevin Coleman will have his games. But Tevin Coleman, if he showed me anything over the last five, six years, is that he disappears. He's the Amari Cooper of the running back position. Sometimes he shows up and you go, oh, I mean, in Atlanta, you'd be like, oh, Tevin Coleman, that guy is going to be the, uh, you know, a superstar on yeah. a, on a franchise, and then yeah 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 no, injuries fair. things like fair. that. Do you, so do you worry about the Kyle Shanahan roulette wheel? Where I know that that's the worry that's been brought up on this show a lot. That roulette wheel lost one of you know its pieces in Matt Breida. So yeah, I, I get concerned around the goal line on any of these teams that all of a sudden it's same thing that would happen with Alvin Kamara. You'd be like. Crap, Mark Ingram got that carry. Uh, this player's on the field for that down. But I think Mostert was given the opportunity. He he earned that opportunity last year, and the team's moves in the offseason say they're very comfortable going forward with those two guys. If you have 498 carries, they, they're not coming from Garoppolo. So you distribute those across a couple of players. To me, that, that gives you a great opportunity to be a top-tier guy, and they're going to score a lot of points. They're going to move the football. So for me, Raheem Mostert is one of those players that is being drafted behind where his true value could be. No, I like it. I it, what what's interesting is players like Mostert compare it to the hype that you get on a player like Clyde edwards helaire Like these are two great offenses in football, but Clyde edwards helaire we see creeping forward and forward and forward in drafts. May have a slow start, doesn't have an established role. Mostert feels a little bit older, a little bit of ambiguity. I don't know if people see the upside of Mostert is, is kind of why I'm surfacing him the, today. The breakout potential of him is great based on where he's going in a draft. You're not drafting a guy who has to break out to in order to capitalize on his value. Which but is what Clyde edwards would exactly, be. Exactly, right. but you're yeah. drafting a guy who still can break out, even and, and he doesn't even need to, to to return value on that spot. Weeks 12 through 19 last year, RB7. And uh, second most rushing yards of all time in a playoff game. We saw it on display. So I think he will have every opportunity. There's the hype train stuff in the offseason, adding 10 pounds so he can take more carries, all of that stuff. But I just like what I saw on the field. Part of it is the eye test, and he passes that for me. Yep. You want to go ahead, Jay? Sure. Sure. I'll hop in here uh, with a guy that you know I, I've, I've talked about a few times and not just on this show, uh, but I believe in Marquise Hollywood, Hollywood Brown, and I think he is a genuine breakout player this season not only do I think he can be I believe he will be a a breakout candidate he's a great wide receiver go look at reception perception and see how he fares he's not a one-trick pony deep ball you know just because he's so fast and you know he, he's got one of those true you know 
uh, cards in his pocket that's just like, I'm faster than you. I, I beat you. You look at next-gen stat numbers and you see the amount of space that defenders give Marquise Brown in his rookie year. It's, it's you know, at, at near the top of the league. There's a reason for that. But then he's also a good route runner. He's got good hands. He's just a really solid wide receiver. Look at last year, comes into the league as the number one drafted NFL wide receiver, even though he was injured because of that talent, and he's on a team that is that has you know the the last year's MVP for quarterback. Unlike you know the the common breakout candidate of Terry McLaurin, we all love Terry McLaurin, but he's got Dwayne Haskins throwing him the ball, whereas Marquise Brown has Lamar Jackson, and you could say, okay, well there's there's touchdown regression coming for Lamar Jackson. That outlandish nine percent of his passes went for a touchdown. Okay, that's not going to happen. Well, he also only threw the ball about 400 times. That is also likely to not repeat. I mean, that is so far beyond. That's lower than any other quarterback that played even 11 games. I mean, he was almost the same as Drew Brees, who missed a huge chunk of the season. Let me let me ask you a question on him. When he was with Kyler Murray in his junior year, he put up 75 for 1,300 yards and 10 touchdowns. In 12 games. College. What about yeah in college yeah what about that line do you think that line is feasible in the NFL is that a ceiling line for Marquise uh, Hollywood Brown I, I seventy five receptions I think sixteen games yeah I mean I have him statted for seventy four receptions okay this year um I you know I've got him well over a hundred targets because if you look at the target market share that I think he will actually command somewhere north of twenty percent last year it was sixteen percent I mean you're talking about John Brown last year was like 23%. You know, it's like he's he is going to be one of the two main targets there. And the, I'm not worried about Miles Boykin and Willie Sneed. So it's a smaller pie, but he's going to get a large slice of it. And he's extremely talented. Look at the first five weeks of last year. Then he got injured. He got that ankle injury in week five. Those first five weeks, he was on a 16-game target in his rookie year for 125 targets. I mean, that's fan if he got 125 targets, he's an absolute breakout star. And when it comes to the touchdown opportunities, the real thing that makes a guy break out in fantasy football, they're there. He had seven touchdowns in limited time where he's averaging like 59% of snaps. That's going to go up this season, and you can get tap passes with him. You know, you're mm -hmm. around that goal line. Just give him a little in-around tap tapsy. pass. A little tapsy. He can also get an 83-yard touchdown like he did last year. I mean, this is a guy who I think has everything in his corner. They drafted him to be that guy. They want Lamar Jackson to grow as a passer as well. So I think passing volume goes up. His snap percentage goes up. Him getting better in year two is there. There's no competition there for targets outside of Mark Andrews. He's awesome. I'm I I'm a genuine believer that he's going to break out this year. Last year at the trade deadline in fantasy leagues, I didn't target anybody as much as I did Hollywood Brown in leagues that I had keeper opportunities. He seemed like the kind of player that due to the injury, what you see on film is a, is an elite player. Much like Tyreek Hill, he forces the defense to play him a certain way, which gives him that kind of space underneath. He won more at, on curl routes and out routes than he even did on nine routes because of the, what he makes the defense do. If I'm playing devil's advocate from Hollywood Brown, which I think is important, yeah, it's injury is a concern. He is not built like Des Bryant. He is a player that is built like Deshaun Jackson. That is a who has struggled with injuries at times as well. A lot of these speedsters do, and last year, Hollywood Brown did. So that would be one risk factor. The other one is just what do they need from him? The recipe for success last year did not require Hollywood to do that. So will they continue? You know, I think Lamar loves throwing him the football. If you watch when he's active, it's Mark Andrews, it's Hollywood Brown as often as possible. So the breakout path is there. I think those would just be the things that jump out as – yeah, the, the injury risk is legit. Injured in college, injured, obviously, I just said, week five is ankle injury. Um, but I do think he is going to be, you know, when they really needed him, they 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 eased him back from that ankle injury and played him about 50% of snaps. And then come playoffs, and you saw another crazy line, you know, 120-plus yards and what double-digit targets. Current, Brooks, look up his current average draft position for me, and if you don't have it. You got it. I want to know where he's going right now. He's not being drafted as a breakout. Then that's what I love. It just just like Raheem Mostert. He's not being drafted Wide as a Wide receiver top. 29 in best ball. Yeah. 
Wide receiver 29, I'm happy to take him there because I think his ceiling is a wide receiver one. All right, before I get to Mike's, uh, percentage chance that you think Hollywood could be a wide receiver one this year? Percentage chance, I would say 20% as a wide receiver one. That's about where I'd have it. Yeah, it's pretty good. Before we move into... Mike didn't want to give his percentage. Uh, I would put it at... 10 maybe 10 percent okay. top but a top 20 wide receiver i think that to me is 65 percent cool before we move to my breakup pick I want to thank today's sponsor simply safe fellas what is the number one sign of a bad home security system answer a home security system that is so complicated you just never use it and then that is exactly the type of security system that simply safe has spent a decade fighting against it's designed to be easy. It protects your home 24-7, and you can order this thing online with the click of a button. You open the box, place the sensors, plug it in, and now your home is protected by Simply Safe. There's no technician. There's no salesperson that has to come and disrupt your house, and there's no outrageous monthly fees or a two-year contract. They got rid of that stuff. That's nonsense, according to Simply Safe. And us, who uses Simply Safe? to protect our studio. Like, this, this, this marvelous studio that we're recording the show in, we don't worry about it when we're gone. It's protected by Simply Safe. And you can head to simplysafe.com slash footballers and get free shipping and a 60-day money-back guarantee that simplysafe.com slash footballers to make sure, uh, make sure they know that our show sent you. And we also want to thank HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit and my dinner multiple times every <laughs> week look they offer fresh high quality ingredients every week for a super flavorful experience and and really they're they're breaking you out of your rut i have staples in my life right like oh we got to get the Sounds kids painful. i got I, I got I, we're throwing in pizza what is it tonight spaghetti whatever i love when it's a hello fresh night because it's it's always something new it's always something different it's delicious and you can save up to 28% by using hello fresh versus just grocery store stopping shopping and you don't have to do the shopping that's my favorite part. You're stopping part. the shopping. They they give you pre-portioned ingredients. Uh, there's less, uh, you know, mealtime prep work. You, you know, pretty much all these meals are on the table in just about 30 minutes. It's a wonderful time for me and my wife when we make them. We love it. There's something for everyone. And you can go to HelloFresh.com slash 60footballers and use the code 60footballers. That's the number 60footballers to get 60% off your first three weeks, including free shipping on your first box. That's HelloFresh.com slash 60footballers and code 60footballers to get $60 off your first three weeks, including free shipping and your first box. Additional restrictions apply. Visit HelloFresh.com for more details. I'm curious if our listeners would have preferred to get only $55 off mm. just for <laughs> just the for sake the of the show, but I mm. guess 60 is more than 55. That is a mathematical fact. All right, Mike, you have a breakout candidate that will be very polarizing yes. for our audience. It, it will be. But we we had a very impassioned listener of the show right oh, in. I'm, I'm staring at his email. Right right into uh, to the show to uh, say, how how can we possibly think that Daniel Jones is going to be a breakout fantasy football player? He, he, he's a Giants fan. And a lot of capital letters in uh, this email, Mike. Look, they, he, he, and, and he brought it. He brought the fire. But I still believe in Daniel <laughs> Jones as a fantasy breakout quarterback. And the reason I am going with that one, to me, if when I'm watching Daniel Jones play, yes, he made a lot of mistakes. He's a rookie quarterback. Rookie quarterbacks make a lot of mistakes. Those fumbles, they, they, that's unforgivable, what he, what he did in the fumble Number department. one in the NFL in turnover-worthy plays per game in a season where Jameis Winston did that. Yes, because he fumbled the ball. However, he only threw 12 interceptions, which as a rookie, that's that's not too bad. But here's what I want to highlight about Daniel Jones. The last 10 years, rookie quarterbacks that have played at least 10 games, they've started this, those 10 games and averaged 250 passing yards per game. Andrew Luck, Baker Mayfield, Cam Newton, Jameis Winston, and Daniel Jones. That is it. He is in there with elite category. He put up the 10th best fantasy season for a rookie quarterback. And he started 12 games. In 12 games, he threw 24 touchdowns. That's the fourth most for a rookie quarterback of all time. Of all time. That put his pace 
at 32 touchdowns, which would have blown Baker Mayfield's rookie record out of the water. It would have been the only rookie quarterback to ever throw for 30 touchdowns. Now, I get it. He didn't do that. But still, the fourth most touchdowns in 12 games. That's very impressive. He joined Deshaun Watson as, uh, as the second rookie quarterback ever to have three games with four-plus passing touchdowns. That's a very impressive feat, and that's if, you, if you're if you discounting the game, his first start where he had two passing touchdowns and two rushing touchdowns. like He put up monster games. He was inconsistent, yes, but he was a rookie, and he runs the ball. I was going to say, in 12 games, 279 rushing yards, two touchdowns. Yes, he he put up uh, – he was on a pace of 365 rushing yards. That's not – yes, I get it. That's not Lamar Jackson numbers, but it's helpful. That no, is, no one is Lamar that's, Jackson. That's exactly. Alex, saying, old Alex Smith those numbers. are like Alex Smith numbers where you're averaging over 20 rushing yards a game. That eliminates one mistake right there, and we know he is working on his ball security. Then Daniel Jeremiah recently tweeted out something that caught my attention because it's it's something you kind of know inherently, but you didn't realize this. In each team's projected 11 personnel, so one running back, one tight end, three wide. Based on the 40-yard dash, the Giants have, as a group, the fastest ensemble of weapons, even faster than the weapons in Kansas City. He is surrounded by speed. Like Daniel Jones is willing to throw the ball downfield, but he doesn't have to. He can just trust the players to, to run five yards in front of him and take it to the house on top of everything where the numbers are trending in a very positive direction. Their defense stinks. They are really, really bad. They're, the game scripts are going to be in favor of Daniel Jones last year, the Giants' 30th best, as we would call them. <laughs> Their free agency additions, James Bradbury, the 75th uh, ranked <laughs> corner, according to Pro Football Focus. Blake Martinez, linebacker, ranked 58th, according to Pro Football Focus last year. Like These are not awe-inspiring additions to the defensive side of the field. Daniel Jones is going to have to throw the ball a lot, and he is surrounded by talent. I think Daniel Jones is a breakout quarterback. You worry about Jason Garrett? I don't. I I do not worry do about Jason Garrett. Do you think that Daniel Jones had to do too much in a way? It almost seems like he is training himself to be the next Jameis Winston, which for fantasy owners out there, by the way, don't hear what we're not saying. Mike, to my knowledge, has not predicted the Giants to be Super Bowl contenders. No, I, talking, and I don't care. There's a differentiation <laughs> between fantasy success and NFL success. Clearly, that could not be better illustrated than Jameis Winston, right. who broke records and was dismissed. He was great in fantasy yes. football and literally couldn't get another gig in the real Yeah, 5,000 yards can't start for another team. So Daniel Jones last year had uh, four games where he was either the number one or number two fantasy quarterback. The rushing yardage helps. My question to you, Mike, was just going to be, Saquon struggled to stay healthy last year. Mm -hmm. Did Daniel Jones have to do too much? Saquon wasn't able to do as much. Did that inflate some of those rookie touchdown totals? It's, it's certainly possible, but I would counter that by saying this. Daniel Jones put up those 24 touchdowns that I talked about Games that Daniel Jones played with his three starting wide receivers, four. That's yeah. four games. Yeah, no Evan Ingram. That, that, and the, yeah, I'm not even counting Ingram. I'm just saying games that Golden Tate, Sterling Shepard, and Darius Slayton were all on the field together four times. Like this, I I really really believe that Daniel Jones will be a top ten quarterback by the end of the year. Now well, he starts now, the now, season. Now his schedule: Pittsburgh, yes. Chicago, San the, Francisco. The schedule sucks, and that. The opening schedule is is brutal for Daniel Jones. He's a DND. I, I don't think do not it, draft. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's impossible that Daniel Jones comes out and is very surprising in these first few weeks. But even with my love and my projecting for Daniel Jones, he's not likely to be a player I'm targeting in the draft. He will be a player that I am targeting to pick up off the waiver wire, like week three or week four. Yeah, that makes sense. And to to speak to your question real quick, Andy, about with Saquon not there, did he have to do too much? In those games that Saquon wasn't there, he actually was on a – it was only three games, but it was a 16-game pace of 16 passing touchdowns. When Saquon came back in week seven on, 
That's when he had a 16 game pace of 38 touchdowns. He was much, Just, much better makes the offense when better. Saquon was in there. All right, you guys want to talk about some early busts? Mm. <laughs> Let's do it. Bus. <laughs> Bus. He's letting them have it. Bus. Bus. All right, so again, like I mentioned before, in the Ultimate Draft Kit at ultimatedraftkit.com, tons of consensus bust picks, also breakout sleepers values. But these are our individual bust picks, early bust options. Jason, go ahead. Oh, we're kicking it off here with me. Yeah. No, no, please go ahead. Go. I will. You have eight, I will happily. You have go. ten seconds. I will happily go first. And this is where uh, I knew there would be disagreement because you two both believe in Austin Eckler. Boo! As a I'm booing you. Boo! As a as a fantasy option, uh, as a great fantasy option, especially you, Mike. You, yes, you're in. You want Austin Eckler on your teams this year, and I believe that he is going to be a fantasy bust. When I looked up the best ball drafts that are happening post-draft, I saw him as the 19th player taken off the board. Overall, not 19th running back, 19th player. You're expecting big things. I've seen... Uh, You're talking about great friend of the show. Great friend Austin of the show, Eckler. Austin Eckler. Yeah. I love Austin Eckler. Mm -hmm. I think he's a super, super cool guy. You express it in interesting ways, Jason. Look, my, my stats are my own. <laughs> and they don't paint as rosy a picture. And what's ironic is I believe that Austin Eckler's fantasy relevance this year will come based fully upon his rushing attempts. That's where he's going to be good if you guys are right. If he's up there at 200 plus carries because he ends up being the clear leader of this, what I project to be a three-way timeshare, then, then I will be wrong and you will be right. But my issue is that he is a receiving back. His fantasy production last year came so heavily based on the awesome receiving work. They will line him out wide. They'll, they'll put him in the slot. They use him out of the backfield. He had over a hundred targets last year. That is fantasy gold. But oh, wait, that doesn't mean that happens this year. Now, there's been a lot of talk about when people have a hundred plus targets at running back that the next following year, you know, I've heard this about uh, Leonard Fournette, mm -hmm. that the following year doesn't always work out well. Well, I wanted to see because some of those numbers are misleading. You have David Johnson, Le'Veon Bell, Danny Woodhead, Lamont Jordan, and Alvin Kamara. These are 100-plus target running backs? Those five are 100-plus target running backs who the following year played, you know, were injured. And it just ruins those numbers and it makes it look so devastating. So I did the math myself. I took every since the year 2000, every running back who's had 100-plus targets, and I wanted to see what actually happens when they play the next year. How do they fare in general? So I took everybody with you know fewer than 11 games out. I want to make sure they're actually playing, and I wanted to see what, was the, what happens. There's 25 running backs since 2000 that have plus 100 receptions uh i i'm not counting this last year because we don't know the following receptions year yet. or targets targets sorry um and the average the following year is a loss of 25 targets 14 times they lost more than 20 14 of 25 of those players lost more than 20 targets 11 of those 25 players lost more than 40 targets the following season and now we have Austin Eckler, who we know has a completely different situation. He doesn't have check down Phillip Rivers at quarterback. He's got a scrambling Tyrod Taylor. I think it is very within the realm of possibility that Austin Eckler loses 40 targets. I have him losing 30 targets. And if that happens and he's not a super, you know, if he's not a 200 carry running back, then he's not going to return at the value he's being drafted at right now. That's my fear. I see the avenue. I don't think he's a guaranteed bust. I'm not saying he sucks. I think he's a great running back. But the probability that he could not return on where he's being drafted, I think, is way too high. So I've got him in on my draft sheets as a guy that I'm going to be avoiding because I think that he could bust for fantasy value. You want to take this or you want me to take this, Mike? Hey, you can, you can I, start. My only counterpoint to you is that, look, he's not being drafted as the RB6. That's what he finished as last year with those target totals, with the lower rushing attempts with Melvin Gordon in the backfield. So to me, it is an argument about who is integral to the offense. Great defense. I think we all agree Los Angeles has a great defense. Yes. 
Eckler is integral to the offense. I don't know how much Taylor and how much Herbert we're going to get. But I'm not drafting him to be the RB6, and that's what he finished as. I have him ranked as my RB11. And so if the cost is RB6, I would be with you. He's not. I don't think he delivers on last year. I have him losing, I think, about 20 targets. Yep, as do I. And I don't have him with over 200 carries. I have him with 165 instead of 132. Wow. So I've got him with 166. We, you and I see him with there the, you same, go. the same Three rushing pressure. touchdowns. But I, but I have him with 77 receiving targets and 60 receptions. That's the big difference. And yeah. So obviously – that That's the difference. If you've got him at running back 11, the difference there is that. Is, is that. And based on my research on both – history and then the projection forward of the quarterback change if he's down in the 70 targets you're not going to be happy now <clears throat> how many of those guys in your research when you looked at the guys who had the 100 plus targets went 100 plus targets straight into the bag of money to be the starting running back i do not have contract details <laughs> attached here mike he, he just got the bag man and he was signed as an offensive weapon and, and i think you guys are I think you're being very low, giving him 160 something attempts when last year he had 132, and one like once Melvin Gordon came back, he's averaging what like six or seven attempts. He's not getting six or seven attempts per game. He'll be up in the in the 10 to 15 range every single game, in, in my opinion. Well, like 10 would be 160, so we've got him at 166. I'm I'm saying he he will be there, uh, like at minimum. At minimum, he'll be hitting ten, and then he'll have the games where he's up with fifteen or more, uh, fifteen or more carries. I just, I believe in the talent. And where do I, you have him though? You probably don't have him much higher than I do. I have him at running back seven right now. You have him much higher than I do. I, I have him, I, and I'm with you guys. I have him losing thirty well, look, targets. Jason, but, this is his, like you said, his stats are his own. They are. This is an early bus show. He is on record as potentially incorrect and you so, and you you talk about you know the contract situations of these running backs where you know I, I don't have those details but these are great running backs this is not a list of like these guys got 100 targets for a reason you know it's Ladanian Tomlinson and Matt Forte Chris McCaffrey Reggie shout Bush. out to Lamont Jordan though that I, I missed well him. no I took Lamont Jordan out he is mm. not in this day no. I'm saying I took out the people no, that were I love injured him, the though. following years no I wasn't giving him grief I, I love Lamont it's, Jordan it's been a minute since I've heard that name yeah yeah all right uh, I'm going to throw a name out there that I think is a boring early bus pick, but one that's worth surfacing based on where he's being drafted, and that's Tyler Boyd. Tyler Boyd is a good, reliable NFL wide receiver. But over the past couple of years, due to what's transpired in that offense, you had Andy Dalton, you had no A.J. Green. You don't have any guarantee of A.J. Green this year, but he is returning and he is at full health today. You also drafted T. Higgins and you have a rookie quarterback in Cincinnati, and we looked at the uh, average draft position of Tyler Boyd right now. It was something like wide receiver 32. I have him in the 40s this year. I just don't know what his real ceiling is going to be in a rookie-led offense with A.J. Green returning, with T. Higgins involved, with Joe Mixon out of the backfield. I have my concerns. He's been a very strong, reliable wide receiver. He's been over 1,000 yards the past two years. That is not... You know, that's that's a nice benchmark to say a thousand yards. It's not really special in the NFL to get over a thousand yards at the receiving position. Uh I just don't think that Tyler Boyd is going to represent for your fantasy team what he has represented over the past couple of years. Last year he was the wide receiver twenty three in sixteen games without AJ Green. I know we've had the discussions on the show before about whether Green helps or hurts him, but I like T. Higgins personally. And we've talked about kind of the ceiling, the limit of a rookie quarterback situation there. I think Tyler Boyd is just kind of meh to me this year. Like, I don't think he's going to be on my teams because I don't think the upside is there with the rookie quarterback in A.J. Green. And the, what's wild about like his ADP, I don't think, is, is too extreme. It's not extreme. crazy. Like, it's not wide crazy. receiver 32, but it's the fact of, uh, on average, in best ball drafts, uh, according to Fantasy Pros, best ball ADP, going behind him, Michael Gallup, Will Fuller, Deontay Johnson, Brandon Cooks, like guys who... All four of those I'd have over Tyler. Guys who it, have ceilings. They, they All four of those guys have a ceiling, com especially compared to Tyler Boyd. So I, th I think it's it's interesting to me that people are taking that safe pick. Tyler right Floor, there. 
Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's not bad. Oh. Yeah, that's what he seems. Tyler like. Floor. He's got a good Tyler floor. F- he has. A, that's a thing. Tyler he's got no. a good no. floor. I will not. His floor. Speak. His floor is like 800 yards receiving. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. That's near you won't his stand ceiling. for it. You feel like that is insulting he's be or the something. 800 to 886 <laughs> range. Yeah, he'll that's... be between 830 and 850 yards. Oh my goodness. And also, I just want to point out while you talked about AJ. Green coming back, and oh um, you know, you brought up T. Higgins. Can't forget about what Rodney first. Anderson. No. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. oh, I missed the chance to talk about Rodney. No, I was going to bring up John Ross. Oh, Absolutely, he's yes. also there. There, I we need a bet, <laughs> and I don't know what the bet is yet, Jason. Whether Rodney but, Anderson makes no, the roster? No, not that bet. That bet, I, I guess I lost a live bet on Tuesday, so I'm not going to make any quick ones. But I just want a situation where. When you're wrong about AJ Green, you have to wear his jersey for some period of time. I that would, is very I'm important in, to me. I'm in on that. If if AJ Green is a top 15 wide receiver this year, I'll wear his jersey for a week. Well, that's fine. That's a one way bet. That works for me. Great, because I love uh, AJ Green. I hope 15, he is. Yeah, I just don't yeah. believe it at all, and I'm never going to draft him. All right, Mike. It's time for you to uh, maybe pay back the Eckler hate. Yes, a little bit. From Jason's nonsense to my sensical data, <laughs> to my perfect analysis. <laughs> Stephon Diggs, love the player, do not like the destination, do not like the destination at all for fantasy purposes. I think Stephon Diggs is is going to be a fantasy bust. Here's the thing. Last year, Diggs was the guy, the guy for Minnesota. Adam Thielen played full snaps in basically seven games. Do you guys recall on Minnesota who had the second most targets on the team? Man, second most targets on the on the Minnesota on Vikings. The Minnesota Vikings last year. Uh, I would guess Adam Thielen. No, it was Dalvin Cook with sixty three. Ah. That makes sense. Sixty three targets. That's what Stephon Diggs was competing with for target share. He ended up as the wide receiver twenty one overall. He was a top twenty four receiver in six of fifteen games. He did not help your team, and now he goes from Kirk Cousins to Josh Allen. It's two teams that have very similar offensive philosophies, not very high volume. Yeah, Stephon Diggs was used as a deep ball player this last year, but the difference is Kirk uh, Kirk Cousins, one of the most accurate quarterbacks in the league, to Josh Allen, and they were were both very similar on their deep attempts. Josh Allen threw a deep ball on 14.6% of his attempts. Kirk Cousins, 13.7. I wish you didn't have that stat. (laughs) <laughs> that's a good stat because that is it, a very but it's not just stat. about efficiency on the deep ball it's how often he does it yes. my my counterpoint would have been well josh allen's come out and said he's never going to check it down he's always going to chuck the ball but you just said the so but, did kirk cousins very 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 similar but here is what is not similar what yes their adjusted completion wow. per- <laughs> what you can really dance their adjusted completion percentage so josh allen's adjusted completion percentage so that's factoring in things like drops. It was a, a stunning 28.4%. Meanwhile, Kirk Cousins, an adjusted completion percent of 47.8. It's because Kirk Cousins is great. He is a very good passer. Last year, Stephon Diggs had 32 deep targets, and 20 of them were deemed catchable. John Brown had 28 deep targets last year, the number one wide receiver, the go-to deep threat for the Buffalo Bills. 11 were deemed catchable. So 32 to 20, 28 down to 11. And Josh Allen, he's got the cannon. Maybe the accuracy finally shows up. I'm not betting it is. And, and on top of that, what I was saying, of Stephon Diggs was the guy for this team last year. John Brown's not going away. John Brown was 24% of the, of, of the targets last year. And they're both excellent route runners. Like you can, if... If that's where you want to go and attack this situation of saying, well, Stephon Diggs is an elite route runner. You know who also is an elite route runner, according to Reception Perception? John Brown. Matt Harmon's write-up of of Stephon Diggs basically says, well, now Buffalo has two number one wide receivers because that's how good John Brown is at running routes. He he gets open. Having to deal with other plays. And, then I even, and Cole Beasley's not going away either. He was over 20% of the targets. So I'm just not in on Stephon Where Diggs. Where do you have him? 
Because when you say not in, he's being drafted about wide receiver 25 right now. Fantasy finishes for Diggs since 2015, 46, 38, 20, 11, and 21. I have Stephon Diggs right now ranked at 35. I have him at 24, so right about where he's drafting, not as a an elite option. But I, I would counter with this. Last year, John Brown was the wide receiver 20. Sure. So if you... Now you can make the argument of well, John Brown's still there, and now there's targets. I just did that, great, but I'm but you you started by making the argument that Josh Allen can't support. He's just not as good as Kirk Cousins. Well, he had a wide receiver twenty in John Brown last season. Diggs is better than John Brown, and I just want to point out that when you pay the amount of money and you try to change your team, that what you've done with Diggs. Those other players who had great stretches the year prior, they can easily become irrelevant. I know it's weird and difficult to think about Robert Foster the year prior, but he was the wide receiver 20 from weeks 10 on with John Josh Allen. It was like, oh, but he's great. And then it was just like, poof, you're done. You don't matter to me. We got John Wasn't Brown and we got Cole Beasley. He was an undrafted free agent. Right? That is correct. Foster? But, but no, I, I think that can happen. Look, you, we all call a spade a spade. We all grimaced when Diggs was traded to Buffalo. Yeah, it's not the best Wait, landing. Just spot. the way you did last year when Antonio Brown was a Buffalo Bill for 30 <laughs> for seconds. For a day. Because you knew that the identity of this team, the defense, the big play. I mean, Stephon Diggs is going to have some yes. monster game. Yes, he will. In but Buffalo. If, but and he's, he's going been, to help Josh Allen. If he's being drafted as the wide receiver 25. That's fine. I feel like that's that's fine. But I it's mean, busting on that, you got to suck. Well, let me, let me right? ask you a couple questions here, Mike. Then that means you have players like Sutton. Probably Devontae Parker. I have Parker ranked higher, yes. What about a guy like Marvin Jones or Tyler Lockett? Uh, let me pull up the rank. Well, Tyler Lockett I would for sure take uh, over Stephon Diggs. So, yeah, I have, I have Lockett at 25 uh, and Marvin Jones right now at 28. Marvin Jones is would be similar, like a similar tier of how I view the player where Jones is going to have games where he goes off and games where he just disappears. That's, that's another part of the problem why I was highlighting – that Stephon Diggs was actually only good for your fantasy team last year about six times out of the whole season. Oh, it's been so painful. In those games, he was great. Yeah. But now, will he actually have that many of those explosive games when it, when it could easily go over to being John Brown? And when you're talking about Robert Foster, I mean, as the comparison – they gave John Brown a good amount of money. Like he's exactly, and that made the uh, the other options irrelevant. But I'm but saying so. Stephon Diggs doesn't come in and just replace an undrafted free agent. Stephon Diggs is coming in to pair with uh, a player who has the fourth highest cap hit on the Buffalo Bills this year. Yeah, D Diggs helps the quarterback. I mean, yes, it helps Josh Allen tremendously, and Diggs will have his games. He has never been a pillar of consistency. It'd be interesting to see if he was able to do that with the inaccuracies and troubles of Josh Allen. Allen will have his games. Diggs will have his games. I'm comfortable with his ADP. Uh, yeah, I'm comfortable with his ADP. I think the strongest issue here is the consistency because that's where it's like if you're not a high-volume team and they are not, they want to be a run-first defensive-minded team, then you are going to have volatility. You're not going to have consistency uh, for Diggs. And, and so if you, if you want to call him a bust for that reason, I mean – you know, Amari Cooper last year, you could say, was a bust for your, your team because even though he finished great, he didn't help you win games at the end of the season. It's really uh, shocking Mike didn't just go with Amari Cooper. Right. <laughs> that should, I mean, that's just honorary, right? Like, that's like yeah, our I don't, I don't honorary think I doctorate. Highlight it anymore. Our honorary doctorate that should be in the mail <laughs> soon. Someone that's listening, please, we're all asking for an honorary doctorate from some Oh, yeah, we, are, we would like one. I want one. Pretty bad, um, but his honorary bus certificate is also floating out in the ether at all times. I feel, it feels like Mike has an honorary Cooper bus at all times. I've got an honorary Juju bus at all times. Mm -hmm. Who's Jason's honorary permanent? Apparently, perma Austin bus? Eckler, big dumb face. <laughs> I, I was not anti Eckler last year. This is a brand new thing. I like ending the show on big dumb face. That's perfect. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in, supporting the show. Check out the Ultimate Draft Kit at ultimatedraftkit.com this weekend. Take care. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers. 
Foot Clan, remember, Simply Safe was designed to be easy to use, protect your whole home 24 7, starting at 50 cents a day. Order online easily, open the box, you put everything up yourself. You don't got to worry about a technician stumbling and bumbling through your beautiful home. Head to simplysafe.com slash footballers and get free shipping and a 60-day money-back guarantee.